everyone, Mike Kazmer here with Pink Bike. Today we're out in Squamish, British Columbia, we're gonna do a little bit of experimentation, and the topic is wheel size. Now this isn't your normal 29 versus 27.5 or 29 versus 26. Today we're gonna go with the mixed wheel sizes. 29 inch wheel up front, 27.5 inch wheel in the back. Uh, that combination has seen some significant results on the EWS circuit as well as in the World Cup. Uh, so downhillers and enduro riders are experimenting with this, but is it just hype, just a trend, or is there some merit to this idea? So we're gonna do some time lapse and see how it all works out. So the theory behind the idea is that with this bigger front wheel, it's gonna roll over obstacles more easily. Now, picture if you're on a skateboard, those little wheels, you hit a little pebble, you're on the ground. But if you put some bigger, cushier wheels, it's gonna be able to absorb those obstacles. So that's what we've got going on up front. In the back, with the smaller wheel, in theory, that should allow you to kind of whip around those corners a little more easily and just place the back end uh, more quickly than you would with two of the same size wheels. Another reason that we're starting to see more of these combo wheel sizes happen this year is because of change in the UCI rules. Previously, you could only have the same size front and rear wheel, 29, 27, 5, 26, didn't really matter. But now they've opened that up, so you're allowed to have a different size front wheel to rear wheel. So we're seeing riders start to experiment. And there's another reason why we might be starting to see these mixed wheel sizes pop up. And that has to do with the availability of a bike with 29 inch wheels front and rear. Um, some of these companies, they wanna have their Enduro Racer on the fastest possible bike, but they don't have a dedicated 29er race bike. So the answer is put that bigger wheel up front, you can keep the same chassis and you can get them through a season or part of a season. So we're gonna do a little bit of testing today. Now, of course, the Cave does, it's not entirely scientific. Uh, we're gonna try to make it as accurate as possible. We've got a free lap system, we've got a section of trail, we're gonna do a bunch of laps. But again, there's all kinds of variables and we can't control everything. So what we started with is a Rocky Mountain Instinct 29 inch wheels front and rear. That's the same bike that the Rocky Mountain Enduro team is racing on. You Jesse Melamid, Remy Gobbin, ALN. Um, they've had some great results with it. So this, as this bike sits, it's proven. And then what we're gonna do is take a 27 five inch wheel off of the altitude, stick it on here and see how it goes. What that should do, the smaller rear wheel, the slack in the front, um, the head angle a little bit, it's gonna drop that bottom bracket and that should give us a good baseline to kind of compare the bikes and see if one's better than the other. The trail that we've chosen to do this testing on is called Cakewalk here at Squamish. It's got some little rocky bits, some little tighter shoots, and it should be a good variety of terrain to put down consistent laps. Uh, the goal here, I'm not gonna be trying to go for the pink bike hot lap on this one. It's to put down, let's say like an 80% effort each time so it's consistent. So I'm gonna start the day off on this bike with the 29 inch wheels front and rear, take a couple laps. I've already done a getting to know you lap on this trail just so I kind of have an idea of what's ahead. And then after that, we'll be switching it out, take a few more laps, switch back to this one, switch back to the other one. Just be doing a bunch of switching back and forth in order to get some good data and some good ideas of how this feels out on the trail. Adios. Yo. Yo, how'd that go? That was good. One loose moment, but good. So I've got enough laps now, it feels like pretty normal. And I've got a good line where I can keep repeating that same line, pretty sure. So now I go put the 27.5 inch wheel on and see how it feels. How's that? It's good. You can definitely feel it in the corners. It's a little easier to kind of like kick it around the corner more quickly. Um, some of the steeps, it feels a little different as well. Just feel like I'm a little better position with the 29er. I'm kind of up a little higher. This one kind of like sitting in the bike. I think that's six laps. Now I got to crunch the numbers and see how it all turns out. All right, here we are. I finished six timed laps in addition to a few just uh, getting to know the trail laps. Crunch the numbers. The results are in. And they're inconclusive. Aww. You might have been able to expect that, but I kind of thought there'd be a little bit, at least some sort of range between the times. But what happened is on the 29 inch wheel, um, my time started out 141, got a 142. I switched the wheels. My very first lap on the 27.5 inch rear wheel bike was a 141. And then I did another one, um, put down a 137. So I thought, all right, that's a quick time. Switch back to 29er, got a 137. Did another lap, another 137. So basically, it shows that 
I'm able to ride pretty consistently, which I guess is good, but it also didn't really give us a clear cut answer here. There are differences in how the bike feels though, which is important. So what I found was on the straighter, flatter sections of the trail where you're kind of pumping, the two even wheel size felt the best. I felt like I could generate more speed and maintain that speed. When things got tight, there's some kind of like a couple little tiny uphills into sharp, um, steeper little divey downhills, that's where the rear wheel being smaller did seem to help. At least it felt that it was easier to maneuver. There were some straightaways and that's where the two even sized 29 inch wheels felt uh, more stable. It just kind of felt more in control, could really plow. Um, kind of expected results, but it was interesting to really feel it in real life rather than just um, speculating. So it's kind of gonna depend on what you like your bike to feel like. And that's the beauty of this experiment. Um, you don't have to go run out and buy a whole new bike or a whole bunch of new things, new standards. You can just kind of play around, maybe borrow a fork from somebody, borrow a wheel from somebody and see if it works for you. One thing this reinforces for me is that I don't really see a reason to have a bike with two 27.5 inch wheels. I mean, you can get shorter riders will fit on this, taller riders will fit on this, you can get the benefits of the big wheel in the front, kind of goof around that small wheel in the back. Seems like a win to me. And if you want two 29 inch wheels, that works great too. The bigger question is if this thing's gonna stick around and we're gonna see them start popping up in shops in the next year or two, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. What do we call them? Is it a mullet bike, 97 fiver? I don't know about either of those, but if you can think of a better term, leave it in the comments below and let us know. As for me, which way am I gonna go? I'm not really sure, I'm gonna keep experimenting. I think it's fun to play around and just see what feels best. I think for a trail bike, I'll probably end up with 29 inch wheel front and rear, but I could see for maybe like a park bike or downhill bike, mixing it up a bit, we'll see.